Hello, my name is Carol May Wittick, spiritual life coach and your host of Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. What is the awakening? This is the moment in time when humanity rises up out of the darkness. Who is awakening? Each one of us present on earth today, reclaiming our sovereignty, seeking greater possibilities in our reality and looking for solutions. We know being awakened is not a lofty ideal, but a necessity. If we can transform ourselves, we can change the world. Guests on her conversations will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. Listen to their stories and hear how they are in service to the world. Let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. Before getting into the episode, I just want to take a minute to speak about Her Inspirations, which is the sister podcast to Her Conversations. Each episode of Her Inspirations is an exploration of things that we encounter as we're embarking on our spiritual and awakening journeys. And then on the Monday, following the Friday release of Her Inspirations, I send out an accompanying email for each episode. So if you haven't already, I do encourage you to listen into her inspirations and to join the mailing list in which you'll receive additional meditation, journaling and inspiration notes. I'll also include links to any additional resources and announce exclusives to you. So use the link in the show notes to join up. You'll also receive the free Embody Her course where you feel into your vision physically, emotionally, spiritually and start to take action on your dreams. My guest on this week's episode is Trang Nova. She's a mentor, a speaker for women who are hungry to pivot their careers and build their dream businesses so they can live out their potential and purpose with freedom and fulfillment. In her mid-twenties, Trang experienced a quarter-life crisis that led her to leave the sports industry so she could help women not just as athletes, but as human beings. During our conversation, Trang talks about the steps that are necessary to create a business from a mindset and a spirituality perspective. And she also shares what she needed to do to create the dream work, life and freedom balance she lives today. So as always, I begin by asking my guests, HER is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. When do you feel that Higher Energetic Resonance? It's a good question. Mm. I would say I feel this higher energetic resonance most when I am immersed in nature. So when I was living by the coast, I would go out in the morning, watch the sunrise and just sit listening to the sound of the waves lapping onto the sands, having the wind in my face, having the sun on my skin. And that gets me into that beautiful state of so much presence and aliveness. And I think it makes sense because like, you know, nature, right? The four elements, water, air, earth, fire, the sun, and we are nature. So it kind of makes sense that when I'm in nature, I feel that presence and that aliveness the most. And um, in fact, I had that reaffirmed to me recently because I am in Bali at the moment and uh, I went on some adventures last month where I was climbing volcanoes to watch the sunrise. And watching the sunrise, like watching the the sky turn from black with painted stars on the canvas of of the sky to seeing the red of the sun starting to come up and then, you know, the the sun appearing over the horizon, I just couldn't hold myself back. I just started bawling my eyes out of gratitude and awe of this life and this universe that we are a part of, like, it's just so incredible. It's so miraculous that we're even here. So yeah, I think when I am in nature. Perfect. Perfect. And I love that you talk about um, having those moments of awe and gratitude when you kind of look around and you take it all in and you're just like, Oh oh my God, you know, (laughs) and you just kind of filled up with it, like in, in, especially, you know, in the midst of like the shifts that are going on in the world, there, there are such like real deep moments of taking it all in, you know, and, and possibility and everything like that. So yeah, great and great share. Thank you. And, and before we go deeper, Trang, I just want you to share Um, a bit about your story and just tell everyone who you are and 
what you're doing and how you got there. Mm, absolutely. Uh, so uh, as already introduced, my name is Trang Nova and I am a mentor and speaker for women who are hungry to pivot and to build their dream business of impact so that you can ultimately fulfill your purpose and potential and create a life of freedom and fulfillment. Mm. Uh, and this is something that I have landed on and I have stepped into, you know, relatively recently because I haven't always been doing this. Uh, I, I grew up with the narrative of you know, must get a stable, secure job and then be set for the rest of your life. So I graduated from school, I went to university and then I uh, started working as a physiotherapist. Um, as well as a personal trainer, a, a running coach as well. So I was set in the sports and health industry. But then after doing that for a few years, I, I reached 24 years old. And at that age, you start to question different things in your life. And we can go into this more if this is relevant, but there there was this incident one particular morning that really got this questioning process escalated. And I started to question my existence and what is my role on this planet and how can I utilize my life as best as possible to leave an impact. And I realized that I could become more and do more. I wanted to leave like ripples of impact on this world. And how I decided to do that was to step into what I'm doing now, like working with individuals to help them transform not just as athletes, but as human beings mm. and to transform at the core of who they are so that they can thrive in their lives. And I believe that when enough people are thriving, then humanity as a collective will thrive. And when humanity thrives, then the world will thrive for all of us and for future generations. Mm, mm, mm. I'm, I'm so with you on that. So I think you put it put out on social media about your quarter life crisis as well. Yes, <laughs> I've been that point. And it's interesting. It's like I didn't necessarily have a quarter life crisis, but I had like this real awareness um, before I turned 25. I was coming. It was the August, July, August, and I was 25 in the um, October. And I was living in Birmingham, which is kind of the Midlands of the UK. And I knew just I knew that I didn't want to be there. And I just thought, if I don't get out of Birmingham before my 25th birthday, I'm never getting out. It was just mm. like I had to like, you need to get you need to get out of here fast. And I did. So I moved to London and then, uh, you know, a week later, Diana died. So it all went, <laughs> you know, into that. So I was telling you how long chaos. Well, you know, um, but yeah, I, I just every now and again, you do get these um, knowings or these messages that you need to shift and yes. I just wonder, you know, who, how many people make that shift? And I think that's why, like, people have midlife crisis, different kinds of crises. And I think it's only that they're just having a moment where their soul is going, you're on the wrong track and you need to get off this one and shift. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, you're going to live in regret. You're not going to be happy. So, and some mm -hmm. people answer the call and try and do something with it um, or, you know sometimes they leave and they buy a sports car and they go out with the younger model what gave you the direction to like really step into what you wanted to do instead of taking off and going off the rails or you know it could have gone it could have been like oh I don't want to do this anymore but then have gone in so many different ways what was it that gave you that mm. clarity that this is what you wanted to do mm. Well, for me, where it all started to give a bit of context was I was out for a run one morning and when I stepped out onto the sidewalk to begin, I hear a crunch and I'm like, what's that? What's going on? I looked down and I stepped on a snail. <laughs> now, this isn't the first time that I've stepped on a snail before and I'm sure that, you know, many of you have, have done the same accidentally, um, but for some reason on this particular morning, I couldn't stop thinking about it and I felt guilty that me just living my own life doing my own thing had caused such an effect on something outside of me like in this case I'd killed something so then that was what gave me the realization that as one person I have 
an impact. I have a footprint and every decision I make has a flow and effect to, to touch something beyond me. And I started to see the bigger picture that every decision that I make has this flow and effect beyond what I would witness and what I would ever even understand. It, it just continues to spread. So I knew that I needed to put myself out there to make as much of an impact as possible in a positive way because it could be it could go in either direction depending on the decisions that I make depending on how I utilize my lifetime so this is where this quarter life crisis came in because I was so confused I was like I know I have such a footprint and I know that I have so much power but at the same time I feel so small still I feel really helpless and like I'm just one person. How can I ever make that much of a difference? What can I even do to make that much of a difference? So I spoke to my mentor at the time and I asked him, you know, what should I do? Like, should I do volunteering? Should I do some activism? Should I start a non-for-profit? And I remember what he said was so profound because he was like, Trang, you want to make a difference, right? Well, what if you don't have to be on the front lines just to make a difference? Imagine you're in war times. You can make a difference by becoming a nurse and working in the hospitals to help the injured soldiers, right? Right? Could you also make a difference by not necessarily working in the hospitals, but taking a step away from the action and becoming the person who ends the war? Mm. And... I was mind blown because this whole time I thought that I needed to be on the front lines, like really there in the action, treating the symptoms. But at the same time, all these, all these problems that I was observing in the world that I was contributing to in one way or another, like whether it's humanitarian issues, um, environmental, uh, like animal welfare, all those things were spokes of the same wheel different spokes of the same wheel. And how I saw that was that the core of that wheel was human consciousness. You know, the world is in the hands of humanity because humanity has so much power. And a lot of these problems are the result of humanity as a collective, not in touch with our hearts and our consciousness as much as we could be. Mm. And I was in that boat. Like, you know, I knew that I had an impact and a a footprint as an individual, but I never really emotionally connected the dots and I never really emotionally cared enough to change my lifestyle for the benefit of the world around me. I was just like in my own little bubble of privileged living growing up. So human consciousness. And that's why I expanded the coaching that I was doing from just sports and physical coaching to mindset coaching, life coaching, and now business because I love working with women who have their purpose, that they want to serve through the vessel of their business. Mm -hmm. Um, So facilitating that, guiding them to do that is how I see um, that ripple effect being started from the skills and the strengths that I have. Amazing. One of the one of the reasons when I spoke to you as well, I was saying, oh, let's, you know, let's talk about like soulful entrepreneurship, because I think that there are so many um, women that want to do this or I'm meeting more women that want to do this over the years prior to really digging into doing what I'm doing now when I first started to work online what I was doing was I was making websites I was doing websites and email marketing all this kind of thing and so if I met a lot of women who had an idea of something that they wanted to do um, but where they used to stumble was stepping past just having the website you know, there was there was a mm. lot that was missing. So and, you know, at the time, I didn't have the belief in myself to be able to speak to the the, the things that I could see that was holding them back. You know, the, the mindset, the, the issues that were holding them back, because it ultimately came down to belief in whether they thought they they had what it took to do what they wanted to do. 
So mm. a lot of the time they will kind of turn it around on me or stall the end of the project. So a lot of the time it'd be like, oh, I don't like the logo now or the font's not right or the colour's not good. You know, there'd be so many stalls on things that when they like initially when we had the first meeting, it'd be like, OK, I'm doing this. I'm, I've, I've got a Facebook group, but I need a website to do my business, which you don't. But, you know, <laughs> you know, it was like I need this next step. And so, of course, I, I was able to serve them with that. And what I was able to do was do the technical side, but also feeling intuitively into what their branding should look like by them communicating that to me. But then I'd always happen across this block almost every single time. And I used yeah. to take it personally, you know, because when you're trying to help someone and then suddenly they're like, oh, I don't like the font or the wording's not right or this looks all that my friend said, you know, <laughs> another one. And I remember like getting really fed up. And there was one woman actually that I spoke to that I thought everything was going swimmingly until we were literally at the meeting where it was going to be handover. I was just going to show her how to, you know, navigate the website and hand it over. And she came with like a load of excuses and I was like, where is all of this come from? And I remember having a meditation and the answer to the meditation came to me. It was like, she's just really scared about going forward. I was told or just shown in the meditation why she was just, all this resistance came up from nowhere when everything had been okay up until that point. And then interestingly, just later that morning, she sent me a message like kind of apologizing and saying the reason why all of this stuff's come up is because, you know, I realize now I, I haven't got the excuse of I can't have a business because I don't have a website and all of these things. So the resistance came up and was blocking her from taking the next step. Can you speak to that in terms of when you have women coming to you saying, OK, this is where I want to go. And a lot of the listeners as well will hear so many of the guests that will come on that go through something and turn it into a business. But the part that we never really go into and uncover is the mindset and all of the things that need to open up and happen for you to then go forward and go, this is who I am in the world. This is what I'm creating. And I can support myself by doing what I do. Mm, absolutely. And you're right. It is very much the the execution and bringing this dream into reality that, that trips a lot of us up because mm. it's easy to have the dream. It's easy to set up a website. But actually following through with that and stepping into this as our identity is the big shift. Um, before we started recording, I, I mentioned metamorphosis, mm. uh, the process of the caterpillar going into the cocoon, shedding its entire identity as a caterpillar, a gradual, often uncomfortable process, but required for that caterpillar to come out and to spread its wings as a butterfly. And I went through that as well, because from the moment that I stepped on that snail, <laughs> to really owning that this is what I was going to do. That was over a year because I was so petrified of all of the things, you know, like what are people going to think of me? Uh, you know, me letting go of my university qualified profession to do mindset coaching. Like are people going to laugh at me? Are people going to lose respect for me? Because, you know, I had this image of what mindset coaching was. It was a very narrow stereotype. And, you know, is this viable? Is this going to work out? What if I fail? What what if I make the wrong decision and it's too late to turn back and I regret this decision and just like so many fears. And when I look back to what was a thing that got me started and fully owning this journey, it was becoming so intimate and so tight with this mission that I got because I went to this retreat and we did a deathbed visualization and in this deathbed visualization when I looked back over my lifetime I didn't see sports coaching anywhere in my life like I saw my lifetime being used at a grand scale to make a big difference so when I came out of that visualization I realized I had no other choice like it, this was it or nothing 
mm. and nothing else mattered anymore. Not my fears, you know, not the yeah the insecurities. Like that didn't matter because all of that is just a blip in time, and all of that is just transient ideas that we create in our head. But what really mattered was I live this lifetime true to me, and I. And that is what's going to leave me feeling fulfilled and proud and at peace at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So like that is the first step, like becoming so convicted in our mission, like what we are here for, like living for something greater than just having a nice lifestyle. And like that's, of course, really wonderful too. And I'm really big on that. Um, but having something bigger than than us to wake up for and get out of bed for because the scale and the magnitude of that energy is like next level and that will create an infinite source of renewable energy that will get us to spring out of bed in the morning and to keep showing up even when there are going to be obstacles along the way and yeah there will be I've still got obstacles all the time it's an ongoing process so that is the first step. And then also what I have found to be helpful when I'm um, talking to my clients is having that big vision, standing at the bottom of Mount Everest and looking up at the summit, but also not always being fixated on the summit. Because when you're standing at the bottom of Mount Everest and you look up at the summit, it's very far away. <laughs> It's very intimidating. It's like, okay, I can see the summit. Like I can see it with my eyes, but how do I get from here to there? Like it's just so overwhelming. I don't know where to start. I'm just not going to do anything at all. So understanding that the summit is where we want to go, understanding that that mission and our ultimate dream is the end game, but then breaking it down to what do I need to focus on right now? Mm. Allow to... The beautiful quote, every journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Mm-hmm. So what do I need to do today? And then what do I need to do this week? And that is all we need to think about. Because as soon as we can identify and compartmentalize what we need to do today, what we need to do this week, then let the rest disappear. Mm-hmm. And forget about the summit, forget about the rest of the journey and reduce that overwhelm, reduce that analysis paralysis and just focus on, okay, this is what I need to do. So I'm going to go and do it mm. and treat it like it is a non-negotiable. You know, it might not involve other people. You might not be owing someone else something. Like you say, if you had a meeting with your boss, then yeah, you have to show up because it involves someone else. When you're doing your own business, then it's usually involving yourself. So what you've got to do is you've got to treat yourself like you are your own boss, like it is a non-negotiable. And it should be because even though you don't have to show up for someone else, who's the most important person that you should be showing up for? So many people, they break promises to themselves and it's easy to because, you know, it's behind closed doors, no one else is watching. And they, they don't follow through with what they commit and then they wonder why they don't feel good about themselves, you know, why they don't trust themselves, why they have low self-worth or low self-respect. Mm. It's like, you know, if you respect your mum and you make a commitment to your mum, then you're going to follow through with that. You're not going to just like forget about it or, you know, not do it. Like you respect your mum, so you're going to put energy into doing something for your mum. Do the same for yourself. You are the most important person to be self-respecting. And every single decision behind closed doors or in front of other people, your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind is watching. Mm -hmm. And then every single decision creates a vote towards, are you going to be that type of person or not? Do you respect yourself or not? Mm -hmm. So I actually believe that following through with our own promises That is the most important thing. So then when I say that I'm going to do a podcast recording this week because I want to launch a podcast, when I say that I'm going to record some videos because I want to launch a new lead magnet, when I say that I'm going to update my website this week, then I take that very seriously. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I treat that like 
you know, it is a non-negotiable. And if there's anything that I do this week, it's going to be that. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful because the idea of breaking your own promises to yourself, like you said, because no one's watching and probably you didn't tell anybody that you were going to do it. So you're just like, oh, yeah. well, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, who's going to know? Like, no one's going to know. Like, no one's going to know. No, but you will. And the weight of, like, the weight of not following through to yourself, the things that you say to yourself weighs heavier than anybody else because you know people get over what you said and, and what you didn't do because you know ultimately they've got their own lives to lead so unless they're holding you accountable then you know things will pass and and probably as well you'll find that if you're breaking your promises to yourself you're probably hanging around with people that do the same that are not holding your feet to the fire and mm -hmm. that kind of thing which is one of the reasons that i think mentorship is like so 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 important can you as a mentor can you speak to why mentorship and coaching and all of these things are really important in moving forward mm, sure and, you know, to preface this, like no bias as a mentor myself, <laughs> um, but also actual no bias, because I haven't always been a mindset, life and business mentor. No, I haven't. I actually experienced being on the other side, first and foremost, mm -hmm. um, when I was first starting my personal training business and I enlisted a business coach. And what I didn't realize at the time was he was also a life and mindset coach as well. And that, like the work that I did with him, absolutely was revolutionary for me. I can say hands down, if I hadn't worked with him, I wouldn't even have a business today, let alone a full-time business that like makes me completely fulfilled and allows me to have the freedom to travel. I wouldn't even have a business today, let alone what I've got. And that's because working with him, he didn't just give me the tools and the strategies for business. He shifted my entire world from the inside out. And times where I would have given up, times where I would have thrown in the towel or settled, I was able to shift my inner workings to see things differently, to develop the resilience to keep going. And because working with him made me feel like I'd taken that pill from Limitless, the movie, you know, the pill where you eat it and, um, yeah, you just start hearing colours and seeing sounds. It felt like that. I, was, I wanted to shout from the mountaintops how fantastic this work was. I was like, how does how is everyone not already doing this work? Mm. And I truly believed in it and therefore I went into that work because I could see the impact of it. Mm. But, yeah, you know, like ultimately our actions are simply the last step along the chain of reality creation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a great example to highlight that is think about how many people who go on diets to try and lose weight. You know, they focus on their actions. I want to eat less carbs. I want to reduce my portion sizes. I want to cut out dessert. And they focus on the behavior. But why are so many diets, um, why do so many diets uh, fail, you know? Because the action isn't the thing. The action is just the result of all these other inner workings first, such as our values, our beliefs, our identity, mm. our language, our environment. You know, those are just some examples of our subconscious mind or the different filters of our subconscious mind. And this is something that, you know, I can go into more if you'd like, um, if we have the time, I can be a talker. Um, but these are the these are the things that govern our actions. Mm. And if we don't firstly become aware of these filters and we don't then shift these filters, then our actions are going to be short-lived. Mm. And that's where a, a mentor can really help because a mentor can highlight all the gaps that you might not have been aware of in the first place. A mentor can keep you accountable, can teach you new things, can be that, that pillar of support and faith in you, which can be all the difference. Mm. Like it's one thing to believe in yourself, but it's another to have someone else have so much faith in you and you can trust that they're going to be there through the ups and the downs. 
It gives you that confidence to take that extra risk, to feel safe as you navigate this journey. It's it's such a core need, right? We need to feel safe. And if we don't feel safe, we're not going to take that step. So having a mentor gives you so much benefit. And yeah, I still have mentors today in various forms. Mm. And I, I, I really believe that if, if it just fast tracks your journey, if not allows you to create a reality and a life that you might not have ever otherwise. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Like I said, I I was meeting with, uh, you know, I had a meeting with my coach last week and she was just pointing out stuff where I was just like, yeah, you know, like, like, even, like even to kind of big me up and say, there's so much that you do and you take for granted that you don't even realise how much of a thing it is because you kind of get into you know beast mode for want of a better word when when you're doing things that it's just like oh I need to get this done I need to produce these podcasts I need to do this thing and you just get on with doing it whereas what you're doing is actually very new for someone so to have someone to shine that light to you and then Mm -hmm. also someone that you can talk like your big dreams to you know I was kind of telling her what I wanted to do in the next like two to five years and it was nice to be able to like speak to someone and have them go yeah okay then cool you know and and if you're not speaking to the right person at the right time and you tell them that the the wrong person can just literally just pour water all over that and it just Mm. go nowhere especially if you're at the beginning of things and you're still trying to put things together and, and and build the vision that you see so strongly in yourself and yeah. what I wanted to ask you as well is explain what your business looks like in terms mm-hmm. of the fact that you are location independent so you've kind of built a sense of freedom and I think sometimes people think oh laptop lifestyle you're just sitting on the beach drinking a pina colada <laughs> with Matt Book <laughs> under under a, under an umbrella you know but speak speak to that speak to the possibility of that so that it can be understood that even though you're not necessarily going to fly around the world with your laptop under your arm but freedom can be that you can fit it around your existing life especially if you're somebody who has responsibilities like family already but you want to create that business that it is possible to make your business look like you need it to look like and also mm. fit in and around the world and the life that you've built already. Yeah. Yeah, I love this. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> and I know that sounds really cliche, but yeah, there only five years ago, I was thinking about this yesterday. It was only five years ago that I was waking up every day dreading the day ahead, dragging myself out of bed to face my my day at work in a job that I didn't enjoy that I ended up getting let go from. Mm. <laughs> Clearly that wasn't aligned. That was only 2018. That was five years ago. And yeah, here I am now. I, I, I do believe that I'm living my dream life now. This is what I dreamt of back then, to be able to have the autonomy over my tasks, over my time, over my location. And most importantly, be doing what I am passionate about and making a difference in the way that I care about. So at the moment, how things look like for me is there's been there, there's been a lot of changes actually. So um, right right now, what it looks like is I'm I'm living in Bali. I am staying in one place most of the time, and then moving around uh, outside of those times. So. I, I do a lot of one-on-one mentoring as well as group programs and I run retreats. So how I've structured my weeks and my months is for the first three weeks of each month, I have all of my podcast interviews, I have all of my mentoring sessions and my group programs. So that is the structure for the first three of each first three weeks of each month. It is, I'm on, you know, I am present. I've got the cap of my my mentoring and my coaching on and I'm in the zone and then for the last one to two weeks of each month depending on the month that it is I have off completely and this works really well for me because I find that I work really well 
in the extremes, you could say. Like when I'm on for these three, four, three, sometimes three and a half weeks, then it's like six days a week, sometimes even seven days a week, 10 to 12 hour days. But I choose that and it doesn't feel like work. You know, back in the days when I was at that job, if I was doing 10 to 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week, I would, you know, I would hate my life. But this, it's like I have to force myself to stop working because I love it so much and I just want to keep going. And the reason why I get to have that intensity and that hunger when I'm on is because when I'm off, I'm completely off. And for those one to two weeks I'm off, I am relaxing. Uh, I love adventures. I love hiking. I love scuba diving, riding my motorbike. So I'm doing those things and that rejuvenates me like like I've never experienced before. You know, previously working in a nine to five, I never got to have such uh, contrasting polarity in in how I utilize my focus and in, in my energy. And I'm telling you, when I take one to two weeks off each month, then I'm rejuvenated. Like I am inspired. S- creativity is sparked from all of the things that I've gotten to live and to see and to experience during my time off. So then I get to swing from one to the other and I go all in. And when I'm all in, I get to utilize this free momentum. It, it's fantastic. I love it. And I've also learned that I am a woman of routine. So this is going to be helpful for you if you are a woman of routine as well, because, you know, I love to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, exercise in the morning, meditate in the morning. I learned that I needed that because, yeah, like the the narrative, it's is it's cool to have your laptop under your arm and be traveling all the time. So I thought that's what I ne- I wanted. So for the first two and a half months that I was on the road, I moved a total of 19 times. Mm-hmm. And I calculated that is an average stay of just three and a half days per location. And no wonder at the end of the first two and a half months, I felt homesick. I felt a little bit over it. I was living out of a suitcase. I was a bit burnt out. I was digesting so much new stimuli every day, like going to new places, seeing new things, planning the move, taking the time to pack and unpack. It was just so much. And I realized that I didn't actually necessarily want that. And I had to discern what was right for me, which is actually having routines and being located in one place, but then also having the flexibility in between and in the right amounts to move around as well. So like understanding ourselves and what is true to our needs versus just what is sexy is what I've had to learn. So like if you are someone who loves having your home, if you love nurturing your garden on weekends, if you have children, like what is what are your non-negotiables? Like what is your dream lifestyle? And connecting with that, blocking out external expectations or the external narrative of what is cool or what is sexy. Mm. So, yeah, like that's what I do now. Like I am, I like being based in one location. I like not living out of a suitcase. <laughs> I like having my clothes out in an actual cupboard um, and, and, and doing that so that I can have the capacity to focus on my work to continue growing the business and growing my impact. Um, And then in between doing the other things that I love, expressing myself in other ways as well. Beautiful. It's great. And it's, and it's great to hear that within, within it being so flexible, within it seeming like it's rootless, it is actually very rooted as well. Mm. Cause I think sometimes people think just because you want to travel and move around that, you're you're not a rooted person you're not a grounded person but there is a there can be a groundedness in travel because I've traveled myself and, and yes. you, can, you can make groundedness or you can like you say be moving around all the time and moving around all the time is stressful because like you say like staying two days in one place doesn't really give you the opportunity to calm down because the minute that you've moved in like the first night you've kind of got used to where everything is and the second night you realize you've only got one night left and you're going to be moving it's like you yeah. just uh-huh. your brain doesn't rest your brain doesn't rest at all and sometimes you need to get to the point 
where you know where everything is to the point that you can take things for granted a little bit and just yeah. not you know not having to relearn and be on high alert which is what you are when you move to a new place you have to be to kind of like scan everything and work out where the danger is or, or whatever so yeah. um so yeah good and good that, that you're having that as well um so you spoke more about um you know what you need to do to be effective in your business can you just speak a little bit more about that what it takes for you to be functional especially when it comes to your practices and your routine you spoke about meditation what what does that Mm. bring to you Mm. yeah like I've always been quite fascinated by this like I remember back when I was in high school when I was studying really hard for exams um I I would I went for a run and I noticed how going for a run just shifted my state completely and I was pretty much sedentary back then, right? But I kind of, you know, being a um, a teenager who wanted to lose a bit of weight, I was like, maybe I'll go for a jog because that's what, you know, sporty people do. I'll go for a jog. Um, so then I remember going for this jog and I just noticed that I felt so inspired. Like I would finish the jog, I'd walk back home and I was looking at the leaves on the trees and I was feeling the wind in my face. And I just was so much more present and happy than before going on that jog so I noticed that these little not so little I guess but these there are ways that we can shift our state immediately and that was the start of me developing these high performance routines or habits or however you'd like to call them because I became really interested in exercise and that's how I eventually got into personal training so I started continuing with with uh, you know running and then eventually I went to the gym and I learned how to uh, do the exercises in the gym and then exercise became a big part of my life as a health thing uh, but also as a state optimizer. So for me, it all started with exercise and of course I went into the sports industry like it became a huge part of my life. Um but yeah, like starting my days with exercise first and foremost for me is what what gets me going. You know, I can't not. So even this morning, like um, we here in Bali starting this podcast, it, it's a 7 a.m. start to do this recording. But I don't just wake up and go straight into the podcast. I can't. Like I'll just be half asleep. I won't be in the right mood. I always work backwards and I will wake up two hours before anything begins so that I have at least half an hour to do some sort of exercise. So this morning I woke up at five so I could do Pilates and then have my shower, have my breakfast and then come here in time for the recording. So exercise for me, and I know it is for many people because it's scientifically proven that it optimizes our concentration, our mood, our uh, memory, our state like our alertness like it just improves so much mentally as well as physically of course to be more productive with our days uh so exercise has always been a big part of my routines and then I realized after going through this quarter life crisis that there is more to life than just mental and physical you know my whole quarter life crisis was surrounded by the fact that I was doing well in my life but I didn't feel emotionally or spiritually connected to what I was doing and that was when I started to introduce more emotional spiritual practices as well like meditation Uh, and this is fantastic for being really connected what I was saying before like being really connected to our mission our ultimate vision And also like just staying really connected to our goals because, you know, how many people set these New Year's resolutions and then, you know, two weeks later they've disappeared, they've faded away. So like doing meditations in the morning to reconnect to my goals, my purpose, my vision, and then also like checking in with who I want to be today. I run through my core three to five values in my mind And then I'm like, okay, how am I going to embody these values today? So, for example, one of my values is leadership. 
So today I, for example, I've got, yeah, our podcast recording. I've got a mentoring session after this. So then I'll run through my mind and intentionally create how I show up that day by telling myself, okay, I'm going to embody leadership in this call by, you know, making sure that I'm fully present, making sure that my state is optimized so that I can lead and inspire others. And then maybe on the weekend, maybe I'm not doing mentoring calls or podcast recordings, but how can I lead still? There are still other ways that I can lead. I can lead by, you know, when I go to the supermarket, when the cashier serves me, I'm going to smile at them. And I'm going to lead by embodying just presence and human connection. Whereas sometimes, you know, you could be distracted, you could be on your phone and like, you know, not really caring about the cashier, right? So like really like getting in touch with who I want to be and creating my days rather than just reacting in my days is this meditation practice. Um, And that's really important because how we live our days is ultimately how we live our life. So yeah, for me, the, the big ones are the meditation and the exercise in the mornings. And then there's other practices as well, like time management, um, you know, focus deep work. So I'm just doing one thing at a time. And that really helps to uh, be as efficient as possible and get as much done in as little time as possible so that I am more productive, but also so I have more life to live at the end of the day, more life to live at the end of the week as well. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we're coming to the end of our time, unfortunately, because there's so many ways and there's so much more that we can do. But I'd just like you to share um, and speak to the woman who's out there who's thinking or has been thinking so much about doing something, about turning something of hers. Like she's got a purpose, she knows what it is, and now taking those steps to turning it into a business, turning into something that she can offer the world. What can you share in terms of guidance advice tips in those first steps those early those early beginnings where you're just like I've got this idea I feel so compelled to do it and the practicalities because you know we we have the dreams and we see the vision but also we have to take steps in the physical world so what are those practical baby steps Mm. Yeah, there are so many things that I could say here. And I think I'd like to start this with the quote of significant results come from the insignificant things that we do daily. Mm -hmm. Significant results come from the insignificant things that we do daily. So start small. That's all it needs to be. And when we continue chipping away, that is when we get these incredible results and our dreams come to reality so how to get started is like work backwards like you know depending on what your goals are you know your six month goals your 12 month goals see what that actually is and then break it down to the steps that will get there starting with okay what do I need to do this week Mm -hmm. so for example like if you want to launch a podcast let's say Like that's a pretty big thing because you have to come up with a name. You have to come up with maybe like a um, a podcast poster. You have to come up with like the podcast uh, like theme. You got to plan the episodes, maybe reach out to guests, get guests on, uh, research what uh, streaming platforms you want to be involved with, what hosting platforms you're going to host your podcast on. Like there are so many steps. It's very overwhelming, right? So then the the first thing to do is to plan, all right, what is my first step? And maybe the first step is this week, I'm going to commit to one hour of sitting down so that I can generate a podcast name, uh, a podcast uh, like description of what it's about, and then plan what the intention of this podcast is. Like who am I speaking to and what message do I want to put out? So one hour for me to get that information and to get to that step. And notice that that this is very quantifiable. I'm going to sit down for one hour. It doesn't count if I sit down for 59 minutes. 
It's got to be one hour because that is what I'm going to commit to. And maybe for you, it's not one hour. Maybe it's 30 minutes, maybe it's 20 minutes, but whatever you commit to, make it the thing that you do. Like remember, self-respect. We've got to follow through with what we commit to. Mm -hmm. So that might be the first step. And then next week, once you've come up with your podcast um, like plan, then maybe you're going to do 20 minutes of researching podcast uh, hosting platforms. And then maybe later that week, you're going to commit to doing 20 minutes of mapping out the first three episodes. So then like what you're doing is just taking one step at a time, making it so quantifiable that it's bite-sized pieces. Like how hard is it to sit down for 20 minutes to plan and think about a name and um, a theme for your podcast, right? Like it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, make or break. Mm. we, We iterate ourselves to success. We take one step at a time. And that is the the step that most people trip up on, you know, just getting started. So lower the bar at the start. It doesn't have to be perfect from the start and just do one step at a time. And honestly, like if you just focus on those steps, it's a case of before you know it, a year has passed and then you're now 50 episodes into your podcast. Yeah, that's how it starts. <laughs> yeah, put, coming up with the idea and then building and building and building. I I remember when I started this, how it how it all came together. But that's that's how it started, just one by one, and and then yeah. here I am, you know. And now I've got guests on my podcast and so I'm speaking to you, you know. Yeah, and you know, like I, I I don't know if you felt this, Carol, but for me, when I first started my podcast, when I first started my business, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Like I felt like I, I I needed to like know before I started, but like how can you know before you start? You got to start to understand what to do. And even now, like I still, I'm I'm still learning every single week more and more. Like you never fully feel ready to start. You never feel like you you have it all. So you just got to get started. You got to get started because even I'm coming up to six years now at the end of in about a month or so and yeah. I remember when I started I'm like oh my god I'm so late I've like missed the boat on this podcast mm. and stuff but I'm glad that I just went anyway and did it thinking that I was late because people are starting now you know where people say like, am I too late I'm like I don't think it's going away anytime soon just get started and kind of shape it along the way for me as well because it was always about wellness spirituality entrepreneurship that there was always that theme these were like my my circles so the low-hanging fruit around me meant that I got like the first eight nine episodes done pretty easily because I I just reached out to my network and I could bring them in and then once I'd had a little bit of a catalogue a little bit of an archive then I could reach out to people a little bit wider so that they could look at my feed and go it's not just like one episode so they felt that they were coming into something and it just built from there and they built from there so yeah one step at a time you know I, I didn't even know whether I'd still be here or not but um here I am and having conversations with women all over the world. And and it what's what I really like about a podcast is that you can just send an email to a complete stranger <laughs> and suddenly you're having a conversation, you know, of, of real depth. So I appreciate you um coming onto my podcast as well. I know I guessed it on yours earlier this year. Yeah. Um, Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Great conversation. So yeah. we should all we should put that link in the podcast show notes as well. Yeah, it was really yeah, great. Yeah. It was it was it was good to kind of go down that side of things um so yeah so thank you so much for returning the guesting favor and um do you have anything coming up that you want to speak about and then also just let everyone know where they can find you yeah absolutely well firstly thank you carol for inviting me to come onto the show it is Mm -hmm. always such a delight to share these conversations especially with you you know i think we have connected from the first moments back earlier this year so I really appreciate this um yeah like in terms of what is coming up 
So I'm running one more round of my um, group experience later this year, Power Your Potential. Um, And if you want to find out more about that, you can simply go to my Instagram. That's where I'm most active. I pretty much, I'm on there every day. So Trang underscore Nova um, or my website, www.trangnova.com. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find out more about me. Like feel free to reach out and yeah, I'm always more than happy to connect and have a conversation. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Trang. Loved it. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Trang, for sharing on this episode and thank you for listening. Once again, I'm encouraging you to listen into Higher Energetic Resonance Inspirations and sign up to receive the weekly email that goes alongside each episode. Also, this message is for you if you know there's a greater purpose to your life and you're ready to turn that into your breathtaking reality. My purpose here is to help you make that happen. So if you're ready to take the next step in your transformation, if you want to get there with support, accountability and radical honesty, contact me about my Higher Energetic Resonance one-to-one spiritual life coaching program. Again, links in the show notes. You can find me on my website, carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. On Instagram, I'm Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K, Carol May Whittick on Facebook. Until the next episode, take care.